So um, in that slideshow, you guys had the study, transfer heat, blah, blah, blah. Um, so all of your chemical reactions are accompanied by a change in energy, all right? So when heat is released during the reaction, it's exothermic and it feels hot. When it is absorbed, um, then it's going to be endothermic and that is going to feel cold because it's taking the energy away from your hand, all right? So it's absorbing that energy. Um, when it's exo, it's releasing into your hand so it feels hot. Um, the amount of heat absorbed or released by a reaction can definitely be measured with a calorimeter, all right? And so um, you guys will hopefully get to run a lab using a calorimeter. They're pretty simple. They're pretty straightforward. Um, when the time comes, I'll have another little video clip that you guys will get to watch. Uh, but we will we'll start doing the calculations. Um, if you didn't start them yesterday, you'll start them today. All right, so... Um, the way the calorimeter works, though, is that it does have um, a very insulated outer container, okay? So we're going to be using two styrofoam coffee cups because it's going to be very insulated because we want to make sure that we have a closed system. Um, and uh, we'll basically, we'll have the thermometer in there. Um, and then the next most important thing about a calorimeter is that we have water in there, all right? So we're going to put the water in there. Um, because we know so much about water, we know it's specific heat capacity, you know, like all these details about water. So we always use it, okay? And so by uh, monitoring what the water temperature does, we can figure out if heat is being absorbed from that water or if it's being released into that water, okay? And so that's going to be kind of the, the medium that we get that measurement of temperature from, okay? Um, and so... We use water to capture the heat given off or absorbed, um, and then we just look at the temperature change, and therefore we can calculate this thing called heat. So that leads me to my next thing, the vocab. All right, so heat and temperature, not the same thing, right? So temperature, your average kinetic energy of particles in a substance um, measured in Celsius or Kelvin, so we're going to be back to being allowed to use Celsius, not like gas laws where everything had to be in Kelvin, right? So negatives are going to be possible. Um, but temperature is just that measurement, okay? Heat. All right, so heat, we're going to quantify it. We're going to put a number with it, but it is not how we use it in everyday language. Not like when we say like, oh, well, I'm losing body heat or whatever. No, because you're saying that the body had heat, and that's not actually not a tangible thing. What we're actually looking at with that heat is going to be um, energy that is transferred, right? So it's always, it's a transferring energy. That is that is all that heat is. It is going from system to surroundings, surroundings back to system. Um, and that's the way that that word should be used. We also are going to start losing the word cold because technically, if I were to say, hey, what is cold? How do you, how do you define it, right? <laughs> because it's like, well, everybody knows what cold is. But what is it, right? So really what it is, we're looking at this lack of thermal energy. Um, a low temperature is usually how we define it. And that's really what we got to try to stick to. We will go back to the general word just because it's the end of the year and I want things to make sense. So we'll say, oh, things go from hot to cold, which is a fact, and you do need to know that for your assignment today. Okay, things go from hot to cold, never the opposite direction, just like a ball will naturally roll down a hill. It does not naturally roll up a hill. Get the idea? Okay, so high to low. It's always the way things move. Um, okay, so that's a little bit on the vocab, all right? Hot, you'll probably still hear me using, but technically what is hot, right? So, um, so just be careful with those words as they come up. All right, so calorimeter, back to that. We have um, this thing called specific heat. So the analogy that works for a specific heat that was given in this little description right here is we see that um, the pool in the summer, right? The concrete around the pool, you can't necessarily walk on barefoot, right? But the pool water you can definitely get into and it doesn't, you're not boiling, okay? Um, and the reason why is because these different specific heat values. So just to put it in perspective for you, because we... We tell you this. We say water specific heat is 4.18, right? And you get, and we're like, that's a really high number. And you're like, no, no, it's not. But if I compare it to a list like this, okay, water's up here, 4.18. And then as you go down, look at our metals. They're all below the number one. 
So actually 4.18 is very high, okay? Um, another thing, if the pool doesn't make sense to you, uh, is like getting into a car, the seat belt buckle, if that touches your leg in the middle of the summer, ouch, right? That hurts. The seat belt doesn't. <laughs> the seat hopefully doesn't, unless they're leather, I get that. But um, I was just like, I have that issue. But, uh, but that's what we're looking at here. So what specific heat is, is it's um, how much energy does something need to absorb in order to change its temperature by one degree? All right. So what we're thinking here is water can sit out in the sun all day, gather up all the same amount, the same time period of energy, but it really only like increases a few degrees. Whereas metal only has to be out for like five minutes. So if it's out all day, it just gathered up tons of energy. And now it's like drastically increasing that temperature. OK. Um, so again, specific heat is how much does it have to gather in order to increase its temperature, which we see on the thermometer. Um, all right, so which leads us to our next part.